Hi, this is Rick for ED Mobile. I want to wrap up this discussion on, in Unit 3 with a kind of uh, formal discussion about uh, resources, in particular string resources, but all resources kind of follow this same uh, pattern. Uh, we know that we have a resource file, RES, and then we have a values file inside that or folder, and then inside that values folder we have strings XML, and uh, I have strings XML listed out here. So I've got a couple of texts, uh, text1, text2, and I'm going to use those in my layout uh, to drive a couple of buttons, uh, button one and button two. So as we've talked about before, we have at string text one for button one and at string text two for button two. Uh, now, button two and button one I have set up in on create to use an on click listener that I've defined just merely by overriding the uh, the uh, view dot on click listener uh, interface uh, from the view. Uh, so I'm, I have this on click listener called M on click. Notice though that I'm using the same uh, on click listener for both button one and button two. We will sort out which button got pressed by looking at the IDs in the on click listener. So let's look at that. Uh, we are getting a view here and the default code just gives us uh, a view named V. Uh, if you prefer you can change this uh, parameter to view uh, but V is fine. And in the text view I'm going to find uh, TV using find view by ID with its ID r.id.textView and then casting it as a text view. Okay now notice this I'm going to get the ID out of the view that got pressed and I'm going to check to see which button it is. Uh, in the case that it is RID button 1, I'm setting the text to text 1. In other words, the same text string that I'm using uh, for the label for button 1. In the case of RID button 2, I'm setting that text to r.string.text2, the same text as button 2. And then in the default case, which I always want, just to make sure nothing weird happened, uh, I'm going to set that text to a hard-coded string error. Now notice that I can use a string resource in code in a similar fashion that I use it uh, in a resource file. Over here in the button I'm using at string text2 and at string text1. Uh, likewise I can use the the resource ID directly from r.java when I set the text uh, on a text view or any other control. Uh, so this is important because if I dynamically create a control then I can get a string right out of my strings resources file uh, doing this. Another thing I've done is I've defined another folder uh, for values and this one is called values dot or values dash fr and this uh, just merely contains in this case just a strings xml file but these rather than being english versions this is the default strings xml these are french versions of the same strings now it's important that it's called strings XML the same as this and it's important that all of your strings are defined with new values but they are named exactly the same as they are in the default strings folder. So this is how we perform internationalization or localization. We have uh, for each language that we want to support we have a dash and then the language code that we want to use to support it. Uh, so in my pro French, I have just translated everything that I had in one or in the in the default strings XML into a copy of that file and then translated each of those strings into French. So when I run, I'm going to get the default strings XML.
So here we go. The default strings MXL or XML is being used. And when I press 1, I get 1 in my text view. Uh, 2 gives me 2 and back and forth. So I'm using a couple of things going on here. I'm using the same uh, event handler for both buttons. I'm just determining at runtime which button is being pressed. And then also, I am looking at the uh, localization settings on the device itself to determine which versions uh, or which version of strings XML I want to use. So let's see if that works. In my settings, I'm going to change the language to French because we have a values-fr. Now not only is this going to change uh, the language for uh, the application I'm dealing with, it's going to change the settings across the entire uh, platform. And so everything will change, so bear with me. Uh, we're going to go language and then French as spoken in France. So let's look at that. We'll scroll down, uh, Francais, France, and now it will switch over, and it takes a little bit because, remember, the emulator is much slower. So here we are. Everything is in French. And now when we go back and rerun our application, we see that the title has changed because we had a different, slightly different title. Uh, and then un and de, we press these and we get those versions of the strings. So this again is controlled by the language settings that the user has set for the device. For each language that you want to localize your app to, you need to have a different values folder and it, then it's dash or hyphen and the two-letter country code for that language. Thank you very much.